This is Right From The Deep. I'm Karen Ball. And I'm Erin Taylor Young. And this is the podcast from writers for writers, answering the question, why am I doing this? Right. As writers, editors, and a former literary agent, we're in the deep with you, encouraging you and equipping you to find your truest story in the deep places. Get our show notes and more, including a free audio download on how to safeguard your writer's heart at writefromthedeep.com. Hey, everyone. Here's what's happening at Right From The Deep. Thanks to all our patrons on Patreon. You help make this podcast possible. You do, and we love you for it. (laughs) And thank you so much for our January sponsor of the month, Priscilla Shero. Yay, Yay. Priscilla! (laughs) She is working on a great memoir. I love the title called Bonked, Life, Love, and Laughter with Traumatic Brain Injury. And that will release with Redemption Press. And you can learn more about Priscilla at her website, P-R-I-S-C-I-L-L-A-S-H-A-R-R-O-W dot com. And you can also there follow her blog for the TBI PTSD community. It's my turn to talk about a wonder. And Don and I just celebrated our 43rd anniversary. And yes, that Yay! is a wonder. <laughs> In fact, the wonder is that we're still married because we are very different people We have very different backgrounds and very different views on a lot of things. In fact, if you look at our Myers-Briggs type indicators, which is a personality test, we are polar opposites and not just opposites in the categories, but as far away in the categories as we can possibly be, that God can take us from being separate and mold us into being an example of him in the church is a miracle. It's a yeah. wonder. It's a wonder that he carries us through each day, even though we still have speed bumps that we hit from time to time. Because remember, we're very different people and very different personalities. Even though we hit those speed bumps, he still brings us to a place of peace. He still carries us past the minute frustrations and the big frustrations and the irritations and helps us to remember that he's here. He's here with us. And if we will keep our focus on him, then we can find great joy together as well as as separately. So yes, it's a wonder that we celebrated 43 years of marriage. It's a wonder that we're still together. And it's a wonder that we remember each day because God has given it to us as his gift to us to enable us to share with others who struggle in their marriage. Yeah, amen. And now, here's here's the the show. show. Welcome, listeners. We're glad that you're joining us here today in the deep, and we're excited to have an interview, a guest. Hooray! I'm going to let Karen introduce her. Shadia Hrichi is a passionate Bible teacher who has a heart for seeing lives transformed by the power of God's Word, as we all do. I just... I love that that's something that excites us all. She's the author of several Bible studies, including Hagar, Legion, and Tamar from her Behind the Scenes series. And she often speaks at churches, conferences, and other events. She received an MA in Biblical and Theological Studies, and I so envy her for those, uh, from Western Seminary, as well as an MA in Criminal Justice from the State University of New York. She resides in Northern California, and she loves to visit the ocean each week for a date with Jesus. Shadia is a past guest, and we'll stick the links and show notes for those episodes 168 and 169 about sharing the depths of God. Welcome, Shadia. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me again. This is so fun. <laughs> we are delighted again. We had such a fun time last yeah, time. And I know. <laughs> it was like, all right, we have to have her on again. That was great. <laughs> So let's um, start our journey here with um, what does the deep mean to you? And it may or may not mean the same thing as it did last time. Um, You know, I don't remember what I said last time. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So um, when I think of the deep, you know, right now where I'm at, um, I'm thinking a little bit more of a personal, like sharing those deep connections with God. You know, sometimes I feel like I, you know, I miss that in seasons where I feel like I don't hear God's voice as, mm-hmm. as clearly. 
And, Mm -hmm. uh, and then lately, you know, just sort of trying to make room for him more so I could hear from him a little bit more deeply in, in my heart. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, I like that. I I love what you said about making room because it's so easy to get drowned out by everything else vying for our time and attention. And if we don't choose to make room, you know, how how are we going to keep any relationship going? So I I love what you said. Um, So we want to talk this time as the new year starts, we want to talk about prayer teams and Shadia has experience with this. And, And I would love for us to be thinking about this as writers as we start this new year. But let's start with a simple question of what is a prayer team? So, you know, like what the way I think of a prayer team, I mean, we know ultimately, you know, it's a group of people praying, uh, you know, uh, in sync with you for, for your ministry. But when I think of a prayer team for any ministry, I think of it as like a foundation, you know, you know, mm-hmm. Christ is the foundation of our salvation. And I think of a prayer team as sort of another aspect of foundation where they're the ones that are providing the support for the ministry by lifting and holding it up. So that's how I think of a prayer team. It's going to impact the strength of the ministry because it serves as the foundation. Hmm. The thing I like about prayer teams, too, is that they serve you as the person who's writing, as the person who has asked them to come together. They serve you, but they serve you in truth and in understanding. And so sometimes what your prayer team comes to tell you is not something you're expecting or that you're really all that excited about hearing. Yeah. But you need to hear it because God has made that clear to them as your partners. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting to me, um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, like, here's this giant, you know, and he's talking in the letters that he writes to the churches. He's like, pray for me, pray for us. You know, he certainly prays for others and he mentions that he does, but he also knows that he needs prayer. And shoot, if he needs prayer, how much more than do we? You know, I mean, it's just, there it is. So what do you think about writers particularly? What? How do you think they might be benefited? Do they, do they need a prayer team? Um, I would say absolutely. You know, words have power. Yeah. And, you know, as Christians, you know, anything that God entrusts to us to do, whether it's, you know, a ministry or a secular job, whatever it is he's entrusted us to do, we're serving him. And so words have power. And so as writers, it's essential for for writers to have a prayer support because you are, you're acting as a steward of the gifts and the talents, the words that he gives you. And it's a ministry because if you're planning on sharing these words, whether you're published or unpublished, if you're planning to sharing these words you're representing Christ, whether you see it that way or not, even if, you know, regardless of the genre, you're representing Christ as a Christian. And so the enemy is, he doesn't want Christ to get out in any form, indirect, direct, through your words. And so he is fighting you, whether you see it or not. And so like any other ministry, you want a prayer team to, you know, pray against the enemy attack. You know, as writers, all of us know that you have those seasons where it's just plain hard. I mean, I know I'm not the only one that literally just throws my hands up in the air, gets up from the computer, goes in the living room, paces in circles. and like, God, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's too hard. I mean, how many times have we said that? It's just too hard. But that prayer team behind you, with whether, you, whether you're aware of it at that moment or not, you know, the, the having that prayer support, if God has called you to it, he's going to use them and provide support and encouragement to you. And another thing is, you want a group of people to celebrate with you because right. you know you might not always have those milestones. You know, I live alone. I write alone. I mean, I'm alone a lot, and so like I hit a milestone, and I'm like, yay! <laughs> 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 you know, there's a confetti. You know, I mean, so a prayer team. You know, you can get right on your. You know, I do it through email, but you can get right on that list and and just if you wanted to do an impromptu, I I have a little bit more structured outlet, but I'll make a note in that moment. Like I want to share this with my prayer team. You know, and then you get feedback from them. They're celebrating with you. And one of the things that I think is most important is having a prayer team. It reminds you you're not alone. 
you know? Mm, yeah. So it is a good thing, but how, like, how do you find people for this? Like who, what kind of people do you want to look for? So when I started my prayer team, and I probably should have kind of looked up to see how long it's been, but it's, it's been at least five years and probably probably quite a number longer because COVID messed me all up. I don't know what years or what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> but yeah. So it's, it's been quite a number of years, but when I first started the prayer team, it was very, you know, informal. It was smaller. It was like the people that were already praying for me, my close friends from church, my Bible study group, my intimate church family and the closer friends. And so initially I basically just said, Hey, I think I want to make this a little bit more, you know, structured. And so we would meet at my house once a month. And so I would mm. schedule, you know, a meeting once a month at my house and and whoever could come could come out of these, you know, this wasn't that many people, you know, nine, 10, something like that. And so maybe three or four or five would come. And so initially it was really the people that were already praying for me that they were already in, invested. They, they, they were my, my, my people, you know, my friends. Yeah. And then from there, the next step that I took was I was teaching one of my Bible studies at, at my own church. And so there was like a, a few hundred women in the women's Bible study group. And so they, you know, most of them knew a little bit of me. And by the end of the, you know, the 10 weeks, they knew me very well. And, and so at the end I said, Hey, um, I, you know, I did the normal thing, like, Hey, who wants to get on the email list? But I also had a place where like, Hey, if you want to keep up with me, and you want to pray alongside with me, you know, just check this little box on the, on the sign up sheet and I'll put you on the prayer team. And so a lot of the women from my church, that group joined the prayer team. And after that, it was more like just people that I knew were already supporting me. If I got an email from somebody like, you know, God just put you on my heart. I've been praying for your ministry. I'm I'm like, Hey, would you like to be on the prayer team? I never did like a big thing to my whole email list saying, Hey, who wants to be on my prayer team? I've never done that. Now might, maybe somebody wants to do that. Maybe if you have a smaller list, that would, that'd be a good a place to start. But ultimately I feel like if God has put this on their heart, if, you know, like one of the things I, I share sometimes is none of us can pray for every conceivable ministry you cross paths with. Yeah. You you just can't. Um, you can't effectively. And God has not necessarily put all of those on your, maybe in the moment for something specific, but there are certain things that he has called each one of us, like you're going to partner in this ministry in prayer. And so I kind of present it that way. Like, in other words, you're not hurting my feelings. If you're not called right. to this, then, then it's, then we should, it should not be con- a, a connection. But if you are, then please join, you know, and that's it. And I don't, you know, right now I have like about 85 people. It's, it's been wow. pretty much the same <laughs> all that time. And that's kind of where it stays. Like I said, if I get an email from someone specifically, that's feeling, you know, even if I don't know them very well, and they feel like they're really wanting to pray and be a part of it, I'll say, Hey, I do have a prayer team with that gets different updates. Would you like to join? And that's- wow. That's super low key. And I like that because I mean, it can feel like a big favor if not, you know, if presented like wrong, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And- it, the, the mis- so what, you know, like, like I was saying, you, you, you know, we can't all pray for everything that people would like us to pray for on a regular right. basis. You know, I mean, we have jobs, we have families. I mean, and God knows that we're limited. He's not, you know, but he's got lots of people and he can put on the heart for those to pray for wherever it is he's, whatever it is he's put on your heart. And so I always want to say it, say it that way. So you're not really asking for a favor if they are already feeling the nudge to be a part of it. They want to know what's happening with your ministry. They care about you. They're excited about what you're doing, whatever that is that is tugging on their hearts. You're not asking a favor. You're basically just providing an opportunity to stay better connected and continue doing what God's already asking them to do. I have a group of women, all writers, who I consider my sisterhood in writing. And we meet once a year at one of the writers' homes, and we brainstorm together and pray together and have a lot of fun together. But anytime any of us has a prayer request, we come in, and, and we do this all the time, we come in and we make the prayer request. But one of the things that I like about it is they'll say, pray as God leads. 
And if you have uh, something that he nudges you to share, then please share that. Yeah. So that so that nobody feels as though, okay, I have to sit down and I have to really pray about this until <laughs> I hear what God says. It's because we love each other so much. And so we go to prayer asking God to show us yeah. if there's something that we should share. And again, it's it's about serving each other and loving each other. And and it's because we care when any of us are struggling, it matters that we can enter in to prayer and, and express our concern and our love for each other in that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. It really is. I especially like how you said where it's always, it's kind of a two way street, you know, it's you're, you're supporting one another yeah. and serving one another. Yeah. You know, I think too, Shadia, this comes about because you're putting yourself out there and you're developing relationships with people. You know, you never know where a relationship is going to lead and you never know who you're going to meet when you put yourself out there. And some people will be friends and some people will be great friends and some people will be encouragers and some people will be on your prayer team. And, you know, I know you were saying you had a, a fun story about meeting Francine Rivers of all people <laughs> who's become a great friend. Yes. that My goodness. Okay. That really is a fun story. So I met her, I believe it was 2015 at a, a, writer, a Christian writers conference. At that time, I've always been a nonfiction reader. Well, I'm, I'm no longer, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> more big nonfiction reader than a fiction reader. And so as a Christian, I certainly knew her name. I knew that she was a, a well-known, well-loved fiction Christian author, but I had never seen her face because you know, I, I'd never read her books. I hadn't, you know, none of the things. Like I was probably the only person in the conference that, you know, didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and so there in my mentoring group, I was in a mentoring group. The leader said, by the way, friends, I heard a rumor that Francine Rivers is at the conference and everybody was all excited. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, because I didn't know her. I wasn't, you know, I was like that. I'm so happy for all you. I hope you get to meet her, you know, kind of thing. I mean, that was my brain. So dinner the, the, the next evening or whatever it was, I got to the room late into the dining room a little bit late and so you know I'm scrambling I got my meal and so forth and I'm looking around and like there was not a chair anywhere like you know there was just there was like I mean I, would, I don't know I was gonna have to sit on the floor it was so full oh. and back way in the corner kind of tucked up against the wall was a table with several people and, and a two or three empty chairs so I'm like well that's that's where I'm going I guess so I go over there and I just you know say to the ladies I'm like hi um, is, you know, may I, may I join you? And so very graciously, I didn't know it was Francine. She said, yes, please. So I sit down right next to her and she was not wearing a name badge. <laughs> okay. So I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like, oh, wow. I'm, I know it's a podcast. They can't see my body language, but I'm sort of straightening up. Like I've been to this conference several times now. I know my <laughs> way around this thing. I know what you're supposed to ask at dinner. You add, you introduce yourself and you ask, so what do you write? <laughs> so I turned to Francine Rivers and I said, hi, my name is Shadia Harishi. Um, it's so nice to meet you. What, what's your name and, and what do you write? <laughs> <laughs> and she had the most gracious, you know, response and, and just, uh, you know, she's like, well, um, my name is my name's Franny and I write, um, I forgot how she said it, you know, uh, Christian fiction. And she started describing one of her books or something. And I turned to her and because then I real, I, then I finally figured it out, you know, lame. Um, I'm like, you're Francine Rivers. You know? <laughs> and I think the table, the entire table behind us turned around because I said it so loud because I was just like, you know, and um, she said, but yes, she's very gracious and humble. And um, so anyway, we had this great conversation. And then she, of course, wanted to know what I was writing because we all knew what Francine wrote. Um, <laughs> I did not need to ask her that. Um, and she just was excited to hear about a Bible study at that time that I was writing on Hagar, the one you mentioned earlier, Erin, the first study I wrote in this, this series. And, uh, and she just was like, that just sounds so intriguing. And I was like, yeah. And, and then there was like sort of this pause in the conversation. And I was like, oh, this would be the great moment to ask if she'd, you know, everybody in the room wants to ask, would you be willing to read? And I'm like, I can't ask her that. Everybody here probably asks her that. So I didn't say anything. <laughs> and she turned to me and said, I'd like to give you my email. I really would like to read what, you know, the first chapters that you wrote. And, and I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> so from there, God just, you know, is just, just her kindness and her gracious 
gracious heart and and her tremendous encouragement. I mean, thankfully, it was good writing. <laughs> I can't imagine what she would have said afterwards. Like, oh, well, thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, but obviously, God was in the center of all of that, you know, and she endorsed the study and so forth and just just has been a tremendous and, and like you were saying, Karen, she's she's become a friend. Um, truly, truly a dear encouragement. So. Um, I've been to a lot of Christian writers conferences and I've been to a lot of secular writers conferences. And the thing that has always struck me is how the people at secular writer conferences often try to lift themselves up as greater and, and bigger and better than they are. They, they look at you. If you don't know their name, they look at you and they're like, well, don't you know who I am? I remember mm-hmm. meeting Nora Roberts once, and and she clearly did not have the time to spend with this young and experienced Christian fiction editor. It's just a very different attitude and world. It's about receiving the accolades, quote unquote, you deserve. And yet at the Christian conferences, you meet people who have every right to expect to receive their due accolades, and they don't. Yes. Yeah. They don't put themselves up on a pedestal like Francine will say, God does the writing. Yes. Put my hands on the mm. on the keyboard. I know so many other well-known best-selling writers who come in with an attitude of what they do is obey God. And that doesn't make them special. It just makes them believers. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and I love that. I love that about who God has made us to be in the context of writing for him and with him. And I think that's why it's so important to have a prayer team, mm. because in doing this, in accepting the task to write whatever he tells us to write and to share the truths that he gives us to share, we have to be so careful. There are so many temptations, so many pitfalls, so many ways to believe your own press, so many ways Mm. to compare yourself to others and and feel totally inadequate and afraid and depressed. And the enemy loves it when we start to give in to those voices. And our prayer team becomes the warriors who step up and unleash the armies of heaven upon us when we start to lose our way. Uh, they're the ones who step up and celebrate when things go well. And and they're the ones who will say things that, you know, we need to hear, whether we want to hear them or not. It's it's. I've always looked on prayer teams as a, a, a kind of power pack yeah. that you plug into and it surges into you. Their prayers, their love, their service surges into you and grants you clarity and a better understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it. And who is this God that has given me this horrible, awful, terrible, no good, <laughs> very bad career that I have to do, where I have to put everything on the line and then listen to every wannabe writer and editor tell me how I used commas incorrectly in my 142,000 word manuscript. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. There is so much that we've talked about and so much to think about. And because of that, we're going to finish this up on our next episode instead of trying to blow your brain with even more information. So <laughs> join right. us in our next episode for the second half of Plugging Into the Power of Prayer Teams. Thanks for joining us today. You can find previous episodes and more resources at writefromthedeep.com. And I bet you know someone who needs this podcast, so please share it with them. So until next time, embrace the deep. Your writing and your life will never be the same. Mm-hmm.